separate connection of the contest. Let us put our hands together and welcome our president, Toastmaster Boniface. It shows the amount of research and effort that goes in you know, behind the Sergeant at Arms. Thank you so much for such wonderful introduction. A very good afternoon, my fellow Toastmasters and guests. Good afternoon. Uh, as you can see, we are all a little bit geared up today. You see a lot of equipment and you know, something new, right? And yeah, a little bit of technical glitch here and there happens. But as talk magicians, we have seen complete online meetings. And complete offline meetings. But what we have today here is a blend. You know, it's a blend of online and offline, a hybrid meeting, right? Something that will, you know, something that the world is looking forward to. And I think this is somewhere a start for Talk Magic Toastmasters Club. And joining us here today, we have a well-reputed and established club, the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. Now, Gabby's has produced great leaders and speakers in the last couple of years. Something special about this club is that they started or they started only in the year 2020 and have bloomed through those adversities where clubs are trying to make their meetings or trying to make their ends meet to ensure there's one meeting on a week. Gabby's are, has actually bloomed and established themselves. Can we have a huge round of applause for Gabby's response? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have Gabby's in our link of today. Thank you so much for joining us. So we have one announcement. So Talk Magic Toastmasters has uh, you know, arranged for a club outing for tomorrow. We have about 25, 30 members from the club who will be attending. I request all of you to be there and you know, try and have as much participation. Secondly, congratulations to DTM Matthew for winning the division level contest and you know, taking talk magic from the division to the district level. Can we have a round of applause for that? Talking of the division level, the coronation, we have someone here today who is a stock trader and also a magician. So we have Sunny from the Coronation Marketing Team who will be talking to us about the Coronation. Sunny, can we have you on? Hello, everyone. 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 Gonna hit you like a ton of bricks. But as uh, you know, Toastmaster Boniface mentioned, we are here to talk about the Toastmasters coronation event. Now, with the coronation event, as you all might may or may not know, is the Toastmasters district event. And this is the let me tell you, Toastmasters, some of you who might be seasoned Toastmasters who've been in this in our system for a while, this is the first live coronation event that we are doing in four years' time. You just heard pointed out that. We have had offline meetings, online meetings, a mix of the two. Well, it so happens that the coronation event has been offline for the last four years. Sorry, it's been online for the last four years. And so we have got a lot of catching up to do. The event that's happening this time is going to be a buildup that has been happening over the last four years. And I'm very proudly presenting to you the Toastmasters coronation event 2023 on the 27th and 20th of May at the Hilton Hotel here in Bengaluru. The build-up has been so great. It's been four years in the making. I can promise you the expectations and the delivery will transcend whatever we have in mind. But of course, now you might be wondering, okay, all of this is very good, but why should you attend the Toastmasters Coronation event, right? It's ultimately, everybody has this question, why should I bother? Any speech we listen to or anything that we want to be a part of, the first question that we all ask instinctively is, why should I care or why should I attend? Well, then let me tell you, there are three reasons, three compelling reasons why I think we should all attend. And I'm gonna share each one of them with you right now. The first one, we have very impactful keynote sessions and workshops. Can we have one of the posters please? 
while we are loading the poster, let me proudly present to you that this time in the Toastmasters coronation, we have got the world champion of public speaking 2017 who will be at the event. So Pramod Patsadevan, the world champion of public speaking 2017 will be with us during the entire uh, day. And it'll be a great opportunity to see and hear from what it takes to be a world champion and to interact with the world champion. When we join Toastmasters, we all want to be great at public speaking. Well, this is the pinnacle of what we are trying to achieve, an example of the pinnacle of what we're trying to achieve. And it really is a great chance for all of us to see what the world champion has to say. And if you've not heard his speech, I would uh, uh, encourage you, highly encourage you to go back home on YouTube today, type in Manoj Vasudevan and listen to his speech on, that he gave in 2017. It's very interesting. I don't want to give any spoilers, so I'm going to leave it to you. We also have an, uh, another interesting keynote session. Can I have a second poster, please? We are very proudly presenting to you, Mr. Saksham Gar, the editor of Penguin Random House, who will also be with us for a keynote session. Now, Saksham is a very interesting author who's written a number of interesting books. And I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of one of the books because it's very interesting, right? What if you came face to face with the gods? <laughs> Phones stop working, smartwatches die, and arms start glowing with blue scars. This is what happens to our protagonist and 10 other souls when they are kidnapped from modern day India. But why must they go on this journey? And how are the gods connected to this because of their kidnapping? To know all this and more, come for the coronation events. All right, so that was to let you know about the kind of speakers and keynote session that we have organized. This is just two that we have confirmed and can release and, and can uh, disclose right now. We have many more. We have TEDx speakers. We have uh, Bollywood uh, personalities who are uh, in line to be a part of the event. It promises to be something really interesting and something spectacular. I highly encourage you to come for the uh, keynote sessions and the presentations. Our next uh, reason, this reason number two, why I think we should all attend is because Toastmasters gives us a great opportunity to network with all of our peers. You know, Toastmasters is a large fraternity. We have got more than 150 clubs here in Bangalore, and you will be in interacting with your peers from more than 150 clubs at the Toastmasters coronation event on the 27th and 28th of May. We also have a uh, cocktail dinner reception on the 27th of May. So it will be a great opportunity for you to unwind, relax, you know, Boniface mentioned that I do these uh, card tricks and magic. I might get an opportunity to present and showcase some of my mastery and card trickery on the 27th evening during the cocktail dinner reception. And I highly encourage you to come and be a part of the networking uh, um, activities and the entertainment that we have all lined up. And as I said, four years in the making. I also have a short video that will show you highlights of the previous uh, sessions and the previous activities. That we can we please roll the video? We'll do it together. Okay, so while we are working on the audio, as you can see over here, we have a uh, code to that will take you to the registration link and the website that will give you more information. The website, I mean, the, the, the bottom line, 26th, 27th, 20th of May, the event is the 27th and 20th of May. The 26th will be an installation ceremony, which you can or cannot attend, but the, the, uh, the event dates will be the 27th and 20th of May. And while we are organizing the audio, I thought I'll reveal this at the end, but I'll tell you right now. You do have to attend both the days if you are unable to. If you'd like to attend only the 27th, that's also fine. If you'd like to attend, that is also fine. So when you go to the website, you'll you'll see whatever you think suits your schedule, whatever is convenient for you. Choose whatever 
So it wasn't my network, right? <laughs> I thought there's something wrong with it. Thank God. I keep looking at you and Preeti because I see your movements. I know it's not my Wi-Fi either. <laughs> I was looking at both of you, but I think the exact time that I looked at both of you, you were looking straight. So I thought, he isn't me. Where are they meeting? So this is Talk Magic. Um, they have they meet at um, the HBC Club, which is a cosmopolitan club. Hennur Banaswadi Cosmopolitan Club. So they meet. Um, and they don't have Wi-Fi, there, is it? It's not very strong, I think. And it's raining very heavily. So even the data at my side is also very fluctuating. I think that that is a big reason actually today. And one possibility might be because of the heavy real rally today. Congress and BJP both in town. You never know if some jammers are there here and there. That's also a linkers meeting. Linkers meeting BJP. happening in Karnataka. Yes. <laughs> Too many linkers meeting happening today. Too many. Very happening day. I'm just worried because I have to log out around four o'clock.
Can you hear us now? Yes. I know you missed everything that happened in the last 15 minutes, but that's okay. Not 15 uh, minutes. Um, somewhere in between when you started playing the video is where we missed. Almost seven minutes. Okay, fine. We are good back. Want a picture? Yes. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna. Oh, it's gonna take time. I think we'll oh, do okay. you can... yes. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before I go, I'd like to just a quick show of hands. How many have? Um, how many of our peers here have attended a previous coronation event? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, Gita. Yes. Your name is. Teju, okay. Gita and Teju, very quickly in maybe 30 seconds or less, can we get your um, experience of what it was like to experience coronation in 30 seconds or less? From here, from here on, yes. Um, if um, I have to go back, 2009 is when I joined the conference, it's a good 30 years. I think there's just one line that I would say about coronation that is. From 2009 until now, there is not a single district conference that I've missed. Not a single contest that you've missed. That's and brilliant. This conference is every year, but now there's just one. But there's not a single one that I've missed, no matter which part of the country it was. That's and brilliant. That's the value that the district conference has for me. And I would strongly recommend everyone who's not experienced it before to definitely take part. It is fantabulous. Brilliant. Fantabulous. Since 2009, participated in every contest. That's brilliant, Gita. Thank you. Teju, in 30 seconds or less, your experience of coronation. Yeah, every uh, coronation is I joined. I don't think it was that Thank you very much. Very enriching. That's a good word. So before I hand it back to Boniface, I'm going to forward a, a registration link to um, maybe you, Asha, or you, Boniface. I'd like to forward it to, and uh, you please forward it to all the members of the group if you've not. Uh, uh, registered for the coronation, please do look at your calendar on the 27th and 28th. And if you have some time, then consider coming and being a part of the fantastic event that we have got lined up for you. So on that note, thank you all very much. <laughs> although, although that's not the reason why if you choose to participate today, I'm going to give you a special discount coupon. You'll get a certain percentage of what it will far transcend that to again look at your calendars on the 27th and 28th and be a part of what promises to be a very exciting event. And on that note, everyone, thank you very much for your attention and back to you. Thank you so much, Sunny. Uh, you've actually built or you know, tickled my curiosity. I will definitely be there. And I'm sure some of our other folks and members, please come. Yeah, so I will pass over the link uh, once I get it from Sunny to the group. So please go ahead and register for the coronation. And uh, you know, it will be a great and fantastic event. Yeah, thank you. You see, all right. So, getting back to our meeting, so, uh, how many of you have heard of the uh, rabbit and tortoise story? You know, where the yeah, the rabbit wins the uh, sorry, the rabbit sleeps and then the tortoise wins the race. So there is a sequel to this story. Okay. So what happens is once 
the tortoise wins the race and now the rabbit is not happy it's offended it's like i'm the fastest animal in how can the tortoise beat me so the rabbit goes and challenges the tortoise again telling we need to have the race again the tortoise agrees they go for the race and this time the rabbit's all focused it goes for the kill it wins the race okay now the tortoise being the competitor now the competition now he, he's he's not happy he's like no this is not a fair game you know the rabbit is faster than me obviously so he goes back to the rabbit and he says i want to challenge you but this time in my grounds so what happens is in this new circuit the tortoise adds a river in between so there's a river in between the circuit and if you have to reach the uh, finish line you'll have to cross the river so they start the race obviously once they reach or the rabbit comes fast it reaches the river it's not able to cross the river the tortoise comes slowly easily swims across the river the tortoise wins the game now the rabbit's not happy he's like no this is not done so they are quarreling amongst each other right this is frog that's sitting in the corner of one of the trees and it's laughing laughing at this uh, you no know, the rabbit and the tortoise so now the both of them go to the frog and they ask why are you laughing so the frog looks at them and says no you all are quarreling like idiots but i can beat you all in just one shot with my eyes closed so all three of them race okay so they start the race the rabbit runs fast but it stops near the river the tortoise is slow the frog jumps goes to the river it easily maneuvers jumps into the water and wins the race and it laughs again now both the rabbit and the tortoise are offended now they can't take uh, somebody else coming in and you know winning the race right? so they say let's challenge again so they do the same race again so they start but this time what happens is the rabbit puts the tortoise on its shoulder and runs fast the frog is a little slow once they reach the river the river bed the tortoise takes the rabbit over its shoulder and swims across the river and they win the race now what's the moral of the story don't yeah team work exactly don't compete with your competitors collaborate collaborate with your competitors and you will make magic and i hope this particular meeting the linkers meet is a collaboration between gabis and talk magic and i hope it transcend to an entirely different level where you no know, we build beautiful smart and brilliant speakers to take this meeting forward we have someone so he is a general manager and a leader of a well reputed organization he is also one of the past presidents of the club and he is the current vp member Recently, we we he runs the jam sessions every Wednesday, and it is one of the. We have a huge round of applause. And guess, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, welcome to the Linkers Meet. We are doing this for the first time, and we could see the challenges we had. to set up and start the meeting but we are getting there we can sense the momentum that we are getting on the track like boniface said the tortoise and the rabbit have come together to win this race now i just wanted to start with a question uh, linked to the theme how many of you here feel that there is something missing in us or we are not enough can i can i have a raise of hands right quite a few of them i can very well relate myself to you all on the contrary right we are in a time where we have lot of things in abundance compared to our previous generation but still we feel that we miss so much compared to our previous generation now what's the reason can anybody help me answer this question i got really scared by fitness guaranteed by the session and crowdsourcing to make this entire you know 
transcendence towards happiness together right yeah can, can anyone help me answer this question why do you feel you're missing a little louder please globalization globalization yes. okay i'm migrating from Thank you, Danish. Can you give a, 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 a right? Uh, yeah, there is a sort of uh, some rebalancing happening across the globe. But I wanted to understand a bit more personally. For me. Personally, I've had the sense of I'm not enough, uh, and uh, you know, there's something missing in my life, and I've been searching for this right from. I was trying to find these answers, but then I'm reaching there slowly, step by step. And I, uh, I don't know how many of I think we have been teachers used to say, you could have done better. And when we often compare ourselves with the brightest kid in the class, we again tell ourselves, we could have done actually better, right? And then we got into the workplace, the same story started. You have this appraisals where you have some objectives and definitely it's not possible to meet all the objectives. There is something missing. And then your boss says, you could have done something better. So you always compare and what does it lead to? Disappointment, frustration, and whatnot. So we are actually trapped in this entire uh, world of disappointment and frustration. And to add on to this, we are in the world of digitized, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time in front of the screens, in front of the TV. What do they tell you? They bombard you with the messages, especially the fairness cream, the soaps, uh, whatnot. They always tell you, if you want to look good or perfect, use our product and services. They're always telling you, you're not enough, you're not good enough. You use our products, you'll get better. So we are in this world where, you know, most of them are fallen into this trap. Now, what's the answer to solve this problem? One of the answer to solve this problem is to follow this virtue of gratitude. Now, gratitude is not just or feeling positive or being thankful. For me, it's like a complete profound shift to the mind where actually we can transcend ourselves from not enough. We just more closer to me. I say that I'm happy to. I've not seen any other place like this where we follow uh, immense, we applaud, we give positive feedbacks, we network, there is meaningful connection. And I don't find this anywhere else. So let's give a cue. And that uh, Toastmaster Nancy, Gabby's account has again logged out. Can't see the speakers or hear what's going on there. Is it possible for you to probably show us? I think Nancy's audio isn't connected. Um, um, we might have but to she can hear us, but she can hear us, right? 
I don't think so. No, no, audio no. Isn't Malavika connected. is connected. So Malavika is connected. She's also there. She can. Oh, connect. okay. We are back. Can okay, let's, let's give it up for Saurav again. Thank you so much. Okay. So as the general evaluator for today's session, I'm going to evaluate the whole session. I've actually started doing it right from the beginning and I'm going to do it right till the very end. So um, let me, and then this is, uh, obviously this is a very difficult, meeting to execute as you can all see you know with this entire hybrid setup you know, the online is easy in person is easy bringing both the, the best of the both worlds together is never easy uh, but we have to do it the hard way because that's the right way and we will continue to do that we will discover how to do it the best way going forward so thank you so much everyone who has joined online and offline uh, for as a part of my tackle team so our timer for today, uh, as a part of this tackle team, the team is going to help me with executing my role as a general evaluator. I have my timer, Toastmaster Aaron. So Aaron, can you please introduce yourself uh, and also explain your role? Mr. Um, Dark, today um, I'll be taking on the role of the timer and uh, it is my responsibility to time any table topic speakers or prepared speeches speakers or you know the evaluators who come on stage today. So I'll be timing the speakers using three colored cards. We have the green card, the yellow card, and the red card. Now let's, let me start with this prepared speeches. Uh, today, as part of the prepared speeches, you have the icebreaker and the other, other types of speeches there. But today, since we don't have any icebreakers, I will just go with the other types of speeches. For these kind of speeches, um, the speakers must uh, you know, limit the speeches between five to seven minutes. At five minutes, I will raise the green card. At six minutes, I will raise the yellow card. And at seven minutes, I will raise the red card. For table topics, uh, this, the speaker must uh, limit their remarks to not more than two minutes. At one minute, I will raise the green card. At one minute, 30 seconds, I will raise the yellow card. And at two minutes, raise the red card. And finally, uh, we have the evaluations. Uh, for evaluation, the evaluators must limit their evaluations to not more than three minutes. That's two to three minutes. 
at two minutes, I'll raise the green card. At two minutes, 30 seconds, I'll raise the yellow card. And at three minutes, I'll raise the red card. And yeah, that's all. So um, I'll be presenting my report towards the end of this meeting when I'm asked to do so by our general evaluator. I look forward to hearing your speech. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the second member on my tag team is our R counter for today. And our R counter for today is just Mr. Amit, who's hiding there right at the back. Yeah, welcome, Amit. Please come. Here. Thank you, the team Saurabh. Greeting fellow Toastmaster and, uh, and guest. Today I'm a counter uh, for this meeting and my responsibility is to listen to your speech and evaluation. And I will note down the uh, I will note down the, all the words that you use. Uh, so during the meeting, I will listen for the overused words, uh, including and, well, but, show, and you know. Uh, I will also listen. Uh, I will also listen the filler sound, uh, including a, uh, um, or a. Uh. Uh, I will note down uh, when a speaker repeats the word or phrase uh, such as uh, I, I, uh, this means this means. Uh, at the end of the meeting, I will come up with the report. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. The third member on my tag team is our grammarian for today. And our grammarian for today is Toastmaster Aparna Raja. He's joining us online. Aparna. Thank you very much, GE. Just a moment. When I clicked, I lost my sheet. As grammarian for today, my primary job is to pay close attention to all speakers and listen carefully to all the language usages that goes on today. I will be taking note of any improper, uh, improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, saying, facts, or thoughts. And as grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. And the word of the day is be, oh, sorry, transcend, which means be or go beyond the range or limit. Primarily, it means surpassing. I'm going to give you an example of that word. The word is transcend again. The usage, the quality of the linkers meet transcended our expectations. I shall be taking note of all the people who use the word of the day. And if you hear someone, please give us a thumbs up virtually or over there. And by doing so, we will be encouraging them. I encourage everyone to use the word of the day and also to probably use better words. Um, we will come back with our report towards the end of the meeting when called by the GE and present the report there. Thank you very much. And back to you, general evaluator. It's quite weird speaking when there is no one in front of you. So is it possible for us to uh, see the audience? Uh, not really. Right no, now. no that's, that's, that's Different kind of a setup. So we'll have to settle with this. Uh, the thumbs up, we can count and let you. <laughs> that's your concern. So, okay. Uh, the... Last but not the least, the most important member of my tag team, the person who's going to manage that aspect of communication, which is listening. Toastmaster Danish from the top management. Good afternoon, everyone. Recently, I met a friend and he was looking sad and was like not happy. I said, Ashok, what happened? He said, yeah, no, things not working for me. I wish I would have listened one advice, you know, in my childhood of my order, like when Mante said, Kash, I heard one thing about it, so I have to do a job today. That's in Hindi, generally he said. So I was very curious to know. Okay, tell me, what, what is it? He said, idiot, I didn't listen it. How would I tell you? So, so the whole story, you never know. Believe me, I have heard many speakers, you know, saying that their life changed after hearing some experiences, you know, someone or some particular forum and all. So it's very important, actually. Listening is one of the very, very important. Because what happened in listening, when you speak, you know already, right? But when you listen to someone else, you don't know. 
I also remember, you know, always inspire of three idiot that lecture when the this Ranchor Das Chatter says that when we go anywhere, always remember that we are going to learn something. So the listening is very important. And I'm going to listen all and write down all the points. And at the last of my report, I'll be there will be a query session. And whosoever answer in person, I'll give the uh, this uh, goodies are there. Uh, and I'll make sure also if someone from online, uh, then, then I'll post it, the goodies. OK, that's about my rule. That's it. Over to you. So that was my tag team, the timer, who will be watching on the time, ensuring that we are on time and we are speaking. The R counter, who will be watching out for all the bumps that we have on the rule of good speech, which are the R's and the ohms and the er's. The grammarian who's going to watch out for all the seductive and simple usage of English language that you're making during the course of this meeting. And the listener who would be making sure that we are listening, paying heed to what is being said and we are not dozing off. Before I hand over the stage back to the Toastmaster of the day, um, our presiding officer mentioned about this being a very landmark meeting and I totally agree with him. Can you tell me um, there is one big difference between Talk Magic and the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, people who know both the clubs. Exactly. So Talk Magic was one of the first clubs to jump the in-person bandwagon when it was restarted. And the Gabby's started off as an online club, continues to be an online club, and will continue to be an online club. So Talk Magic and Gabby's coming together is like the best of both worlds coming together. There's one similarity also between these two clubs. Can you tell me what it is? We all love to talk. Okay. What else? Exactly. These are the only two clubs in District 92 who has produced a champion in 2022-2023 for a division representing the division in the district contest in all the three formats of the contest, there is not one single club apart from these two clubs, which has got a division champion in evaluation speech contest, in international speech contest, and in table topic contest, at least till now. I don't know what's going to happen in the contest that is happening today and tomorrow. But as on date, this is what holds true. So DTM Matthew Vargas and Toastmaster Aparna Raja are grammarian for today. Aparna is going to be one of the contestants standing up against DTA Matthew Vargas, and that's going to be a heck of a competition. So you're at the right place, enjoying one of the best meetings of two of the best and the finest clubs of District 92. So the bar is really high, and I will be evaluating on those standards. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get started with a prepared speech. So. Uh, the first speaker is going to attempt project uh, P1 level two. Uh, can I request? Okay, sorry. It's supposed to be project P2 level one. There has been some confusion. Sorry about that. Can I request the evaluator, Toastmaster Preeti Jain, to read out the objectives? Uh, Preeti, can you just uh, uh, tell? Hello, Talk Magicians. Let's see if you can hear, hear you. Hello, Talk Magicians. Good afternoon. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Carry on. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of the speech of Toastmaster Amit is to identify his primary leadership style and also to share some aspects of his journey. Um, uh, sorry, his uh, primary leadership style or discuss leadership style in general. So best of luck, uh, the speech timing is five to seven minutes and back to your Toastmasters of the day. Thank you, Priti. So uh, Priti has some time constraints. Uh, so she might, she will leave at around 4.15. So what we'll do is we'll just call her back soon after we finish all the prepared speeches to give the evaluation. That will be an exception just for clarity. Okay, uh, so the first speaker uh, is a person who is a professional in the semiconductor industry. He loves reading, writing, running, and also playing badminton. When I asked him about the theme, uh, this is what he had to say. 
Gratitude is a wonderful virtue which takes you to a higher energy level vibration. We should focus more on what we have more than what we don't have. Shifting focus from scarcity to abundance is achieved by being grateful all the time. So let's invite the speaker, Toastmaster Amit, to give speech on a speech title, Jobs, Bara, Ayn Branson. Jobs, Bara, Ayn Branson, Toastmaster Amit. Job's infamous ability to push people to do impossible was dubbed by his colleague reality distortion field. After the famous Star Trek episode in which the aliens convincingly create a reality by sheer mental force. An early example when Jobs was working night shift at Atari he pushed Steve Wozniak to create a game called Breakout. Wozniak said it's impossible and it will take months to do it. Jobs stared at him and pushed him to do it in four days. Wozniak knew it was impossible, but he ended up doing it in four days. That's Jobs for you. During the launch of iPhone, first iPhone in early 2007, Apple engineers took first prototype of iPhone and handed over to Jobs for his approval. Jobs took his phone, he looked it, he threw it in the fish tank. After some time, the bubble started coming from the phone. Good, 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 good. He realized there was a lot of space in that phone and he pushed the Apple engineers to make it more compact. To their disbelief, Apple engineers opened the phone and saw, in fact, there was a lot of space inside. So they pushed all the components together and make it more compact. And the first iPhone, which was 4.7 inch, was launched and it was runaway hit among old and young alike. That's Jobs. For Can anybody guess what leadership style of Jobs possessed? Anybody from uh, online also? Yeah, kind of aggressive. Any other name? Authoritative. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. Good afternoon, Toastmasters and dear guests. The authority of people, uh, leadership styles are one who do not consult their team members when they are taking decision. They are very authoritative in nature and they are very clear on their vision, what needs to be achieved. This type of leadership is very effective during military or crisis because a quick decision has to be made during that time to achieve the goal. In 2014, General Motors experienced a crisis which resulted in 6 million recalling of automobile cars. That was due to faulty ignition switches, which has stalled in failure of airbag deployment. That resulted in 13 deaths and 32 crashes, amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars of compensation from General Motors. Mary Berra, who was helmed as a CEO during that time, she believed in three principles, problem solving, transparency, and customer support. With her inclusive and collaborative style, she used to include all her team members in decision-making process. That resulted in General Motors to turn around and become a most innovative company. Can anybody guess what was the style of Mary Berra? Exactly. Thank you. It was democratic leadership style. This style takes the inputs from their team members in decision-making process. They also take and encourage the people to take all their inputs in finding the solutions to the problem. This kind of leadership style is very effective when a creative and innovative things are needed. 
Now going into the last leadership style, from young age, Richard Branson, he did all the things which he was good at and he delegated the things which he was not good at. That is how the Virgin Group is run. Fantastic people throughout Virgin Group run successful businesses, allowing him to be creative and strategically. He encourages people and motivates to achieve their goals. He encourages people to achieve their goals. And also, if there is any mistake, he suggests them to learn from them and take action to prevent them. This kind of leadership style from Branson made the Virgin Group more diverse and successful conglomerate. Can anybody guess what kind of Branson style was? Yeah, one of the supportive. Any particular name? I'm looking for. It's a delegative. So the delegative leadership style is one where they give complete authority or autonomy to the team members to take the decision and achieve their goals. He involves only in motivating them to complete their goals and doesn't micromanage them. So this kind of delegative style of leadership style is effective when you are leading a very skilled and highly motivated team. So to conclude, like there are different leadership styles, each has its own strength and weaknesses. The authority has its own positive sides. The democratic allows inclusion of their team members to give their inputs in solving the problems. The delegative gives complete autonomy to their team members. Understanding these different styles of leadership and inculcating them to make as a better leader so that whenever there are different situation arises, you can apply each of these style for that particular situations and become a great leader. Over to your Toastmasters. Thank you, Amit. I, I was just wondering, sitting out there, uh, who's the most happiest one among the three and who has a longer life? We can discuss that later. Uh, let's get on to the second speaker. So the second speaker is attempting a level two project three. Can I request evaluator, Toastmaster, Prakash to read out the objectives? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, can you just come here because the speaker is speaking online. <laughs> The project introduces the value of mentorship and the Toastmasters view of mentors and proteges. The purpose of the project is to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. The timer may please note the uh, project is for five to seven minutes. And all the best to the speaker. So uh, the speaker is actually uh, graduate from Ramaya College, uh, working for Akshaya Patra Foundation. Uh, her interests include hiking, playing, chess, listening to podcast. Uh, regarding the, okay, so her speech topic is unlocking potential to mentoring. Let's request uh, the speaker, speaker Ashwini to speak. Okay, sorry. Let's invite Toastmaster Ashwini to speak about the speech topic, unlocking potential to mentoring. Toastmaster Ashwini. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, my voice is heard and I'm uh, Ashwini, can you just do a quick check of your uh, sound? Can you just say hello, talk magician? Yes, uh, hello, talk magician. Is my voice audible? It's not very clear. It's audible, but it's not very clear. Can you try again? Uh, hello, uh, is my voice audible? 
Okay. Yeah, it's getting better. It's better. Okay. Great. Yes. I can get on right? Okay, maybe Ashwini, before you start, uh, uh, maybe please uh, tag the timer so that you can see the time in your screen. Can you see the timer? First name is Ari. Can start. But it's actually not a spotlight for me, but I can see that. Okay, you can start. I can get started, right? Yes. Yes. Mentoring is a brain to pick and to listen and push in the right direction. Good afternoon, Toastmasters and dear guests. Today, I will talk to you about a topic that has been instrumental in my own personal and professional growth. Yes, that's mentoring. Many of us are familiar with the concept of mentorship, but what exactly does it mean? At its core, mentoring is about creating a supportive relationship between two people. I'm sure we all know this definition, right? These two people who connect will help each other, you know, achieve their respective goals, right? For me, mentoring has been definitely a critical part of my journey. When I was starting off with my career, I had a mentor who provided me with guidance, support, and all the advice which was required at that moment, which definitely helped me navigate the challenges and uncertainties that came my way. Uh, I am not able to kind of visualize uh, how my life would be if I didn't have my mentor, right? So, to a little talk about this mentor. So, my first mentor was my teacher. teacher. This is back in uh, my uh, school time, I can say, when I was in 12th. So, till 12th, uh, I had like literally no interest in science and maths. I'm sure uh, most of you resonate with me here, right? So um, it was mostly because uh, I was not motivated or maybe I was not good at maths. But uh, this tuition teacher made a big impact in my life. Uh, it's definitely because of him I kind of sought my future in this field. So today, uh, you know, in my introduction, it was mentioned that I'm an engineer. So you can uh, imagine, you know, a girl who doesn't know maths and like has low interest in maths and being an engineer. So definitely, uh, my mentor has played an important role, uh, you know, in my career. And he also made aware of all the career opportunities uh, which I can avail after I finish my 12th. So he told me that by studying well 12th, our life will be different than those who won't. So he also inspired me to be a better version of myself and the results were definitely fruitful, right? So he, he navigated me to towards um, my engineering college. So this is a small bit of uh, my mentoring, uh, you know, my mentor who helped me kind of get into the place I am today. And I definitely owe my achievements to him, right? So this is a small story about my mentor, uh, you know, my mentor in my personal journey. So talking a bit about uh, my Toastmasters journey and the mentoring I have received here. So it's been uh, three months that uh, I joined Gavis. And I should tell you that it has been an amazing journey so far. So I feel uh, in mentorship, it's just not uh, a mentor who will help you, right? In, uh, in Toastmasters, the mentoring happens at every step. Say you are attending the meeting here. So I'm, I'm not even take a speech slot. Still, I'm learning here. I'm listening to, uh, you know, speakers, evaluators. They're, uh, you know, inspiring stories. And uh, at Gabby's, uh, if I 
kind of mention so we you know we have a really positive environment where uh, we teach each other right so talking about my mentor um, um, i want to um, toast my lakshmi as my mentor so she has been an inspiration from the day uh, i saw her on the stage so she brings you know an enormous energy so which definitely inspired me to join gabis and i'm definitely very thankful to her so i feel she does an amazing job as a mentor you know by helping me at different levels so in terms of maybe a uh, delivery of speech so initially when i uh, joined toastmasters i had this problem where i used to talk too fast so where it was difficult for the other person to kind of digest what i'm talking so um, definitely lakshmi has helped me kind of refine that and um, i'm also very thankful to uh, uh, my uh, vp education dtm nancy dtm saurav so it's like their inspiration for us right so um, whenever i attend gabi's meeting i feel it's just not the uh, you know public speaking i'm learning it's just not that right so i also feel it's like a corporate uh, you know um, which is running like everything is in place so whenever we have meetings happening it's like there's so much to learn so you don't have to take up a project management course to learn project management you attend gabi's meeting you will learn everything i also like the way they handle uh, you know hiccups like definitely when there are meetings there are a lot of hiccups right so um, they take up the leadership and they make sure that things are in place that's something um, you know which which has been uh, a learning for me so far and i definitely uh, want to you know continue here and learn more and more as i can uh, grow here right so this is a, a bit story about my background and uh, uh, the mentoring part as a from toastmasters so in general uh, if i have to tell uh, what you know what is a mentor and the mentee role plays right it's just meant, when when it comes to mentoring it's just not meant, uh, mentee who is getting in benefited it's two way so <clears throat> but mentoring just isn't about beneficial for the mentee just when, when you become a mentor you have the opportunity to give back and make a difference in someone's life by sharing the knowledge experience and the wisdom right so just to give a little bit about how one can become a mentor so first and foremost foremost is to be willing to listen right i think our listen, uh, listener today explained it really well listen is a skill so when you talk when you talk you just talk what you know but when you listen you listen uh, you are you are you know learning new things right so and listening plays such an important role in terms of mentorship Right. So when you listen to your mentee, you understand what they're going through, and you help them. Right. And also, as a mentor, it's very important to share your personal experiences. It can be with your success, your failures. So the mentee will be able to resonate with you. So it feels like a human talk, right? So this is one thing uh, I want to be a good mentor. And finally, uh, patience is something uh, which you know. is a very important role in communication right and also we support you so these are a few um, you know things which i sort of mentioned and uh, being a successful career definitely takes a lot of time and many may experience back and failures along the way as a mentor is uh, um, it's, it's a piece that job to provide a space to many to kind of you know talk and kind of explore about So in conclusion, uh, I believe that mentoring is one of the most powerful tools that we have uh, for unlocking our full potential. When you are just starting off, uh, you give up uh, new opportunities. It's always good to have a mentor. So you you have you you take ten years to learn this, but if you have a mentor, you will learn it in five years. You don't have to make mistakes on yourself. On you, 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 on experience in life you learn from this experience so with that i am going to you guys thank you ashwini for sharing your wonderful experience on mentoring so let's get into uh, the third speaker so the third speaker is uh, attempting level 1 project 4 so let me request let me request uh evaluator toastmart uh, chitrakshi to read out the objectives uh chitrakshi can you just uh, identify yourself by 
uh, say do a quick test. You can say hello Toastmasters. Chitrakshi is not there online. Ah, okay. She dropped out or she was not there in the meeting? No, she was all? there. She was there all this while. Seems like she's dropped off. Okay. So maybe we can, we can go to the fourth speaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to the fourth speaker and come back to the third speaker later. So the fourth speaker is attempting level two project one. Can I request uh, evaluator DTM Gita to read out the objectives? Hey, good afternoon. Um, the speaker today has chosen the path motivational strategies and this is his level two project one. The purpose of this speech is, uh, of this project is for the member to learn about different communication styles and identify his primary style. The purpose of the speech is for the member to share the impact of his style on others. All the best to the speaker and uh, the duration is five to seven minutes time. Thank you. So the speaker is someone who's working as an analyst in fintech company. His hobbies include reading books and playing badminton. When I asked him about the theme, this is what he had to say. Being grateful is one of the easiest things you can do in life, but it is the most powerful tool to positive thinking and it instills confidence in you. So let's welcome Toastmaster Pranav for speech titled An Eye-Opening Experience. An Eye-Opening Experience, Toastmaster Pranav. A couple of years ago, if I had taken a Toastmaster's test to decipher my communication style, the answer would have been, sorry Pranav, this communication style does not exist. Toastmasters, I remember a couple of years ago, I was joining my family business. During that time, my communication style was primarily the two piece. Any idea, Toastmaster Nancy, Saurav or anybody? No one? Yes, yes, no. Okay. Yeah. The idea was pecking or bullying. So, for instance, in the pecking mode, it would be like, Hey, Saurav, could you please pro provide me the sales report of today by at least 7 p.m.? But sometimes, I used to get so much frustrated with all these people that I would go on the bullying mode. Hey, 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 how many times I have asked you for a sales report? I want it right now or else you are fired. One day, I was going through the sales report and then I got a shock of my life. Last three months, the sales was very bad. It was abysmal. I just picked up the phone, called my manager. Ganesh, I want to see you immediately. Now, Ganesh came. He was in the attention mode like an obedient boy and he was shivering with fear. And I said, Ganesh, your performance for the past three months has been abysmal. I will give you 20 days or else you will be fired. Sir, sir, I am so sorry. Can you give me one more chance? Ganesh, I won't give you another chance. You, you will be fired if you are not here. Uh, uh, now you can get out. Now, that day, I had a very bad experience. I was filled with guilt. Ganesh was such a good person, an experienced person who had more than 20 years of experience. And I was just firing him in a fit of rage. Next day, he gave me the resignation. I went and I just apologized to him. Ganesh, I think you need to join back to the company. You are such a prized employee. But that was an eye-opening experience for me. I understood that I needed to change my communication style. Now, I adopted the initiation or supportive style of communication. Sometimes in the initiation style, for example, if I go to the office, I directly go greet my employees and say, Hey Nancy, how are you doing today? How is everyone at your home? How is your girl in class then? How is her, how was her exam? 
the good thing about that was that instilled lot of confidence in that person but sometimes people used to get so much under motivated some instance those times i went for the supportive style of communication ganesh you are an amazing leader you should never let yourself go you can do great in life come on you can do it but these were my primary mode of communication but sometimes i used to resort to analytical style of communication for instance in the meeting if i wanted to give, uh, analyze the figures i would say for instance this month you had done last month you had done 200 vehicles this month you had done 250 vehicles fine there is a progress in that but last month you have lost only five customers this month you have lost 10 customers why did that happen that was my analytical style of communication and finally sometimes none of these would work and then i would go for the direct style of communication sauro i am extremely sorry your performance has been very bad in the last few months if it continues you may have to leave the company those masters communication style is like a vehicle which you used to travel from one source to the destination if you want to go from delhi to bangalore you will use a flight right but you can't use the same flight to go to a nearby market right you will use a bicycle so understand that you need to use the right words at the right pace at the right time and at the right with the right people and then you are good to go thank you and over to you thank you toastmaster pranav for sharing your inspiring journey in your communication style so let now let's now get into the third uh, speech uh, chitrakshi are you there yes i'm right here okay uh so the third speaker is attempting uh, level 1 project 4.5 so can i request evaluator toastmaster chitrakshi to read out the objectives please my speaker for today is attempting a project where she has already received feedback for her first speech bases the feedback she has made the changes for the speech that she's going to make today and i would be evaluating her speech and giving her feedback based on whatever has already been said and how she has inculcated that feedback in today's speech over to you thank you toastmaster chitrakshi so the speaker is someone whom we all in talk magic owe a deep sense of gratitude because she has been a backbone of organizing all our meeting system and she's our vp uh, education uh, regarding the theme when i asked her this is what she had to say you must have gratitude in everything you do it's the only way you will realize how much you have gained in life so let's welcome toastmaster malvika for her speech title the sand cat the sand cat toastmaster malvika <laughs> has anyone ever heard of the sand cat no neither had i until i came across this creature on the discovery channel and i got so fascinated by it that i just stopped doing whatever it was i was doing and was completely transfixed to the tv a little information about this cat the sand cat lives in the sahara desert it has modified its entire biology so that it can thrive and sustain itself in this arid and inhospitable land it's also an extremely elusive cat as it doesn't leave any paw prints and neither does it emit any odor it's an exceptional hunter it's so agile and dexterous that before its prey prey can realize what's happening it's already too late and as i saw this pizza i thought how fascinating here's a cat that has adapted 
to this inhospitable land and is thriving. And then I saw myself and I wondered, am I thriving in my current situation? I don't need to hunt for my food. Neither do I have to worry about predators or miscreants as I live in an enclosed space which I can lock. I don't have to hide my footprints or mask my scent. Technically speaking, I should be thriving. You would think that as technology advances, human efficiency would also increase. But unfortunately, the reverse seems to be happening. As we progress technologically, human efficiency seems to be diminishing. The world obesity rate has increased from 4 to 14% in the last 40 years. And the countries with the most amount of amenities and privileges are on top of this chart, like the United States and your European countries. And currently, India is ranked at number two in the world diabetes chart. Why do you think that is? Anyone? <laughs> population doesn't matter. Percentage is regardless of population. We're moving up. Yes. Exactly. Habits, lifestyles, they're all reasons. But one of the main reasons is stress. It has been proven that stress can be directly related to obesity, heart problems, diabetes. We are currently living in very stressful times. You hear it in the radio, in the paper, on billboards. I mean, it's literally everywhere and everybody's talking about it. So if this is the most stressful time, then does that mean that the previous generation were living in less stressful times? When I think about that argument, I remember my grandma. She's 85 years old, has absolutely no health ailments, and till date will actively take part in all household chores. And if I try to imagine what her life was like in the 1940s, it doesn't really paint a very pretty picture. Back then, there were no cars or buses. If you had to travel, you either had to walk or go on a bullock cart. You didn't have microwaves, mixies, vacuum cleaners. There was practically no electricity. And if you want to talk about safety, well, I leave that up to your imagination. Does that sound like less stressful times? It doesn't to me. A renowned economist called Thomas Sowell said, social visions are important in a number of ways. The most obvious is that policies based on a certain vision of the world have consequences that spread through society and reverberate across the years or even across generations. What he's basically trying to say is that somewhere in the past, someone decided that we are doing too much work. And he put this vision out into the world, which has reverberated through the years. And today, we associate doing too much with stress. When in fact, life has actually become much easier today. I mean, we literally don't even have to step out of our houses, even to go to work anymore. So if you come back to the sand cat, nobody was going to make it easier for this cat to hunt and survive in the Sahara Desert. It had to learn to adapt. And since survival is the basic instinct of all living things, that's exactly what it did. So I think it's time we stop associating stress as the enemy and instead thought of it as a friend who is just trying to give us a little push to be better and transcend ourselves. I, for a fact, know 
that eliminating stress did not help me thrive. The more I tried to get it, the more I tried to eradicate it, the more incapacitated I got. And if there's anything I have learned from the sand cat, it's that your surroundings are never the problem. How you adapt to it will ultimately decide the person you become. Thank you, Malvika. The sand cat is becoming more and more familiar to us. I mean, we'll see how we can adapt following its behaviors. So as an exception, like I said earlier, let's uh, do a evaluation for the speaker number one. So may I request uh, evaluator Preeti Jain to evaluate Toastmaster Amit. Uh, Preeti Jain, can you identify yourself and say hello? Talk hello, magic. I'm here. Okay, so uh, Amit, if you can, if you don't mind, maybe you can just come here so that Preeti can see you as well. Yeah, hi. Hello. I want to request the timer to switch on the camera so that I can see the cards there. Maybe timer if you want to just come here. That's okay. Yes. Can you see the timer? I can see the timer. I just want to check how do they want to show the cards. Uh, okay. It's not visible to me. Okay. I have to be very careful. Okay, great. Thank you. Bring okay. it closer to the camera. Uh, bring the cards closer to the camera. Can... Thank okay. you. Toastmaster Amit, first of all, many congratulations for taking the stage and taking your Toastmaster's journey one notch up. Jobs, Barbara and Branson's. I was a little flabbergasted because hmm, I was curious. I couldn't relate these names with the names of some great leaders. So a very, very different take on the selection of speech title. Kudos to you on that. You made me very curious. You, the very first thing when you started talking about threw it into the tank and bubbles started coming up, but, 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 but. That was a real nice take because I could see the smile on the faces, especially two or three on the online only, but you caught our attention. It was a great job. At the same time, I really want to appreciate you one thing. Every moment you try to grab the audience engagement and their attention to ask them the question about the leadership style. And not only that, you remembered every time to thank them. That was really a good gesture and good way to captivate audience engagement. Very nice job done there. You have spoken about three different leaderships, three different styles, uh, well done. But just to take it a little differently, the project was understanding your leadership style. I kept on waiting for your style, your side of the story and uh, what changes do you want to bring in your leadership style? I miss listening to that. I was waiting to hear more because you have time, but then suddenly the speech came to an end. The ending was quite abrupt there. So I want to um, add some suggestions. Take it if you feel like. First, just work a bit on transition and work on the ending. Either you can use some quote or share your learnings or end with a call of action for the audience, but just take it a little bit more. You had time in your hands. Second, read the objective of the project a bit carefully. It was all about your leadership style. And the third thing, which I noticed majority of time, you are clasping your hands and it's a sign of nervousness unsettled thoughts, anxiety. So just be a little mindful of your hand gestures, keep it open and receptive. If nothing to do with it, just keep it open and receptive and it will take you uh, to a different levels in your speeches. Overall, I must say that audience engagement was there, comfort level was there, clarity, eye contact were very much in place. Just add a personal experience, learning and 
end the speech a bit differently and you can take your speech to different level. All the very best and many congratulations to you. Back to you Toastmasters of the day. I just want to add one more point like uh, this was not about my leadership style so I just because I don't know my leadership style yet so I just wanted to uh, give a brief introduction of different leadership style and just depending on different uh, situations you need to adopt these styles and you need to apply to that style so mm -hmm. it was maybe I have not intimated you regarding these styles were in general and can be adopted to anybody just wanted to make it clear. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Amit. I'll request you to work with your mentor on that and all the very best. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Okay. Now let's get, let's come back to the theme for some time. And uh, we are running out of time as well because we have lost some time in between. No. Okay. Coming back to the theme. I've been following this author uh, called Brené Brown. She has been doing some research around fear, shame, and gratitude. So what she had to say was gratitude is, practicing gratitude is one way where we can acknowledge that we are enough and we have enough. Now, the big question what comes to our mind is, why don't we practice gratitude when we all know the benefits it brings? So I just wanted to crowdsource some answers here. Like, why do you think even though we know the benefits, we don't practice gratitude. Anybody online also can answer. Anybody here also can answer. Anyone wants to volunteer? Just to say that, why don't we really get into this practice? I have a take on that, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Go on. We all know smoking and drinking is bad for our health. We still do it. It's the exact same reason. For things we don't see immediate gratification, we, fall, we don't fall prey. Anything that is instant gratification, we are there. That I think is the reason. There is no instant gratification. All these things take time. Thank you, Toastmaster Aparna. Anyone else wants to add anything? Suresh? No? Okay. Fine. Uh, I think a couple of reasons. What Aparna said also makes sense. Uh, some reasons are we are busy. Uh, life has been so much demanding, right? We are quite busy. Our minds are preoccupied. We have been chasing goals. We have been, we have a big bucket list. We are continuously chasing for materialistic things, for possessions, even our society, right? The society values someone who has all these possessions. So we are continuously in this trap. And most importantly, I think as humans, by default, we don't focus on positive things. We focus on negative things. Why it's like that is because the way we you know uh, underwent the survival from the you know uh, long back ice age till here we've had constant threats it could be from external world like could be animals or from the neighboring groups or communities so we are always preparing to face that threat so we are so attracted focusing on problems we play very less focus on positive thoughts. That's one of the strong reasons. And the other reason is, like Aparna said, practicing gratitude needs efforts. It doesn't come naturally. So it's hard to put efforts and to see the results in short term. These are results which come in long term. That's one of the key reasons. So let's continue this discussion. So let's get on to the next session of uh, today's meeting, which is uh, impromptu speaking. To conduct the impromptu speaking, we have a Toastmaster who's a member since uh, 2020, and she's a charter member of Gabby's Toastmaster Club. When I asked her about the theme, this is what she had to say. I think gratitude is more of an in-depth uh, feeling than a mere expression. So let's welcome uh, DTM Nancy to conduct the table topic session. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Sergeant. Well, I think this is the most interesting session that everyone was looking forward to. Now, the people who are not here with their prepared speeches, they'll get a chance to speak. Before you come up on stage or volunteer to speak, let me reiterate the rules, even for the online audience here. You will get to speak for one to two minutes. One minute, green card. One and a half minute, yellow card. And two minutes, red card. Are we all ready? 
Yes. Is that the energy you have? Yes. yes. That's all? Yes. That's all? Ready. Yes. We're ready. All right. Who's going to come up first? First year. Done with the energy? <laughs> no one? Shall I pick and choose anyone? All right, Sid. Siddharth, Toastmaster Siddharth. May I have you up on camera so that we can see you while you are speaking? We fix my hair. I haven't looked in the mirror today. Saturday, right? That's fine. I think the topic would relate to you very well. Toastmaster Siddharth, so here's your topic. Toastmaster Siddharth, you are a peach. You are a peach. Toastmaster Siddharth, over to you. I am the beach. Beach, beach. I am the beach. I am at the Sangam of water and land. I transcend between two elements, two of the five elements. I am going down to my basics. So when you go down this kind of train of thought, you're like a beach. You are in two elements in nature. You are chill. You are transcendental. You look at your basics and you can build from this and think about what are your elements. Now me, am I a beach or am I fire? I'm not Pushpa, but I'll bring an energy from a third element, which is not a beach. So now we've spoken about three elements. See, you can just go through the cycle thought, just like the cycle of life. But what is longer than the cycle of life? A beach. I am a beach. <laughs> okay, man, this is getting a little too abstract. So, I find this a very interesting table topic because here I get to slow down from all the worries in my life, all the activities, all the sub activities, all the things you have to do to go from place to place to place while sitting in one place itself. One of the Toastmasters spoke about what makes it different between our generation and the previous generation. What makes our lives more or less stressful? A lot of us have been speaking about this. If you could be like a beach, you would be very chilled out. You wouldn't be worried by all this stress. But all this connectivity, all the amount of things you can do sitting where you are, like me, in this transcendental state, joining this Toastmasters meeting. I am but a beach. I am moving from water to earth. And I'm bringing fire. Now, that ties up what I've spoken about. I would keep the train of thought going further, but in interest of the card and in respect of the card. Over to you, TTM, Nancy. TTM and DTM. Can we have a round of applause for Toastmaster Siddharth? Toastmaster Siddharth, you could be a beach, a mountain, or whatnot, but the topic was you are a peach, mm -hmm. a fruit. Okay. <laughs> That's completely fine. That was a wonderful take here. And I totally appreciate the way you have spoken on the topic. It was a difficult one. Now, can we have the next volunteer? Are you already scared or laughing? Next one is simple. Guava, maybe you want to talk about Guava? Maybe have Toastmaster Malvika? All right. Toastmaster Suresh on the stage. All right, Toastmaster Suresh, your topic is. Okay, your topic is uh, a role taker in time saves nine. A role taker in time saves nine. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster. A role taker in time saves nine. Essentially, what I understand from this is that the angst which organizers in the Toastmasters Club face, because they don't get role takers. So if the meeting is on Saturday, come Friday evening, there is a manhunt launch for a timer, for a grammarian, for an R counter. So the guy who puts his hands up and says, okay, I volunteer to be a grammarian. So he's a guy who actually saves nine because he is trying to empathize with the organizer the difficulty he or she is going through and then says, okay, I'll do it for you. And 
the organizer heaves a sigh of relief and everything seems hunky-dory. But then come Saturday morning, there's a text message saying, sorry, I can't uh, make it. Uh, there is a function at my home, which wasn't foreseen. You know, it happens only on Saturday morning and somebody else has to uh, come in. And so, so th this is second. So if, if it stretches uh, to more than uh, eight, then it becomes very perilously close to a disaster. And uh, this is where they say a cat has nine lives. And in, in the case of a organizer of a meeting, she has already undergone eight deaths and she's got one last chance to survive. And if she hits the bullseye and gets someone who will actually show up at the meeting, then she's sorted, she's made it. Those are the words of Hopi education. Thank you so much for summarizing it so well. Can't relate more. Who's going to come up next? Toastmaster Pranav. We have uh, online also, we have a few people raising their hands, uh, Toastmaster Nancy. All right, after Toastmaster Pranav, I'll come back to you, Toastmaster Chitrakshi. Okay, Toastmaster Pranav? Yeah. All set? Yeah. Your topic is, if pigs can fly. If pigs can fly, Toastmaster Pranav. Oh God, oh God, all people are eating me and they are making pork out of me. Please save me. If I could fly, then it would have been really great, right? If humans are coming to catch me, that time itself I could go and fly away. I would have no problem, no bounds. I can fly from one end of the planet to the other end. And nobody would really bother about me. If any other animals are coming and going to pounce on me, then I can escape from them, right? Any problem with that? So... One day, I think I will pray to God that I, I get some sort of wings so that I could also fly with other birds. Because if I fly with other birds, then I could also go and see what all things they are doing in their group, right? So I think maybe if I had wings one day and if God was so, so kind enough to actually give me wings, then I will be the winner in this planet. Nobody would actually dare to even conquer me. Thank you and over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Pranav. Moving on to Toastmaster Chitrakshi. Toastmaster Chitrakshi, if you can hear me, just confirm once. Okay, your topic is why water bubbles sound good, 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> When I raise my hand, I should have known when your mentor becomes the table topics master, they end up giving you topics which you have no idea about. I couldn't even think for a second why bubbles go bull, 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 bull. Or do they even do that? Is that a sound we created for them? Or is that a sound that they created for themselves? Or maybe it's just a way for them to lighten all the stress that we have. So every time a sink is full, because we've eaten a lot of food and put it right down the sink and we switch on the tap, we open the tap and the water is flowing and it goes burr, burr, burr. That's a sign which gives us stress. So technically, it's not even something that's a stress buster. Water bubbles going burr, burr, burr is just a sign that there is space. In today's speech, somebody mentioned that, uh, the, that Steve Jobs threw a phone into uh, into water and the sounds that came out were burr, 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 which made him realize that there was a lot of space in that phone, which means that it's also very technical. So is the sound of the water bubbles going burr, burr technical? Is it a stress buster or is it something that gives us a warning? I think only water bubbles can tell. Because they are the ones who did not write this name. And maybe if I go to a water bubble and say, this is the sound they make, they might get very conscious and say, that's not the sound. It's bubble, bubble, bubble. You Humans have made it burr, 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 burr. So, well, water bubbles, they shall know what they have seen. Over to you, Table Topics Master.
you. Round of applause for our table topic speakers here. I'll take one last topic. It was all Gabby so far. No, we had Marvin. Anyway, anyone from the top? All right. Your name is Teju. Toastmaster Teju, your topic is all that glitters in Toastmasters is outstanding Toastmaster. Oh, all that glitters in Toastmasters is outstanding Toastmaster. Over to you. The glitters in Toastmasters. I think we're not outstanding, right? Why we have to target for being outstanding? So I think that's what even uh, previous speaker and Suresh said. Sometimes it is like uh, nobody comes forward. We are here to practice what we are fear fearful for. And uh, maybe we are not glitters also, but only when we come and take the opportunities and serve the purpose of the club or also fulfill that moment being spontaneous, I think that makes us a good postmaster and also it also enables us to conquer ourselves. So when we when our fear, uh, when we fear for taking that opportunity and also target to be outstanding, I think that's when we take that back step. So I feel that uh, no, no need to target for being outstanding, take the moment, take the opportunities and Naturally, the glow comes out and uh, you also conquer the fear which we are going through. And uh, yeah, the, all the all the close masses are glitters, glitters and uh, let's not target for outstanding. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All that glitters is a Toastmaster. Needs not to be outstanding Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, this was my time as Table Topic Master. <laughs> See, I come with a bang and I'm going with a bang. With this, I hand it over to Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Sajid. Thank you, DTM uh, Nancy, for those thought provoking questions. It was quite tough, but I think everyone gave it a very good try. So, going on, back to our theme. The next question, what I wanted to address was, how do you overcome these barriers to practice gratitude? And I wanted to again ask back the audience, uh, Gita, do you want to add anything? Like, how do you actually overcome the barriers and practice gratitude? I've been watching you on, on the WhatsApp. I see every day you post sunrise and sunset. I, and I think that's also one of the ways to practice gratitude is my feeling. Uh, but I have here three uh, suggestions. Uh, it's quite simple, but it's tough. The first one is for sure we need to block time. We need to put effort. There's no way it can come automatically. It means block two minutes or five minutes based on whatever your schedule is and try to do anything, whatever it is. It could be like doing some meditation or journaling or even appreciating others. What I do is I started to do is journaling and I took this habit from Suresh, I must say that. And it's been quite effective because if something is stressful inside your head, just put it on the paper or on the book so that you can just unload your, the worry inside your brain. Uh, the second one is the most difficult one. We are always tempted to compare ourselves with others, right? I, I'm sure the moment you walked into this room, you might have seen people and you've said, did I dress properly? Did I, you know, am I looking good? Or, oh, this guy has spoken so well, I'm feeling a little low. So the magic for the magic sentence for this, uh, what I would like to say is, when you feel low, don't shrink. When you feel high, don't puff. Okay. When you feel low, don't shrink. When you feel high, don't puff. Try to be in a constant state so that you don't lose control of yourself uh, when you're in such situations. Uh, the, the last one is, get surrounded with people who are positive or people who practice gratitude. I think at some point of time, we create our own world. We should at some point invite people who are more positive in our own world. This is the world we control. And start to slowly disengage with people whom you think are not adding value to your life. It's quite hard, 
but I think at some point we need to do things. So these are the three, uh, you know, steps what I figured it out and I just wanted to share it with you. Let's get into the last session of today's meeting, which is general evaluation. So let's welcome back uh, DTM Saurabh to give the feedback on, on, on how did we do this meeting today. With a round of applause. Am I audible? Uh, online audience, audible, visible? Yes, you are. Okay, great. So uh, before I start giving my feedback, I'll have to invite the evaluators. Before I invite the evaluators, let me quickly do a time. Uh, can you just mention the prepared speakers? What's the time taken? The four speakers. Yeah, so for prepared speeches, uh, Coach Master Amit uh, took seven minutes, two seconds. Coach Master Ashwini took eight minutes, one second. Coach Master Malvika, six minutes, 40 seconds. Coach Master Pranav, five minutes, eight seconds. Okay, so uh, I have, uh, okay, so then I, I think excuse my question to ask me everyone qualifies. Okay, I hope the evaluators have taken note of the time. Um, and uh, I have two requests for people have to leave early, uh, one online, one offline. So <laughs> I don't know how to deal with this. But what we'll do is we'll uh, stick to the order in which we had. So I think Prakash has to go first. And then we'll have uh, Chitrakshi and then we can be there. Is that okay? Yeah. So, uh, Toastmaster Prakash, we request you to present the evaluation for Toastmaster Ashwini. Good afternoon, uh, Toastmasters, top magicians, and Gabians, or whatever the, I don't know what you're called. So, and my target speaker in particular, Ashwin, Ashwini. The, uh, the subject was mentoring. And unlocking the potential through mentoring was your topic. You did fabulously well. And what I really liked about it was the conversational way that you approached this topic. I almost felt, I felt that uh, even though I was sitting way back, I felt that you were totally talking to me. Your, your focus, your approach, the way you spoke was entirely directed to one person in particular. And the other thing that I really liked about was your enthusiasm to this uh, whole mentoring process was really infectious, especially that statement of yours stood up that is the, it almost felt like you mentioned something about attending the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, you could learn about project management. It was like attending Gabby's Club was the panacea for all your challenges. So your, your enthusiasm towards your club, towards your, uh, uh, the project was really visible. Now, what could have been different to so that you could transcend your public speaking levels, your public speaking limits, and taking taking it to surpass, surpass it and grow beyond? What would be different is the first, very first thing that I could point out was that you're sitting and delivering a public speech. I would advise you to stand. That is the very first thing. Public speaking is not about transfer of information, public speaking is a good public speaker will be not just communicating information, he'll be primarily trying to inspire you, to motivate you or to entertain you. And how could you have done that? That is the question. And how could you have done that? If you stand up, you get much more leverage to show your body language. So that is one very, very, important thing to do, especially when you're online. And otherwise, there is no other option. But especially when you're online, you have to stand and deliver. The second is we are talking about vocal variety. Very simple thing. You used anecdotes. You show, You told us about your interaction with your mentor, how your mentor helped you. All you had to do was introduce a couple of dialogues. Make it real. Make it real for us so that we are able to experience how you were, what was happening. And Dialogues gives you a lot of room for vocal variety. Another option for you to raise your uh, uh, public speaking to a different level. And finally, one thing I felt uh, was called for by the project, how does Toastmasters envision mentoring? That was one part of it, which I thought you could have 
developed on a little more. So having said that, I would say a very well, uh, 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 very well, uh, you know, uh, taken project, very well organized project. What you could have done was these two, th two, three things to make it more engaging, more make it more connecting to the people. And I, I'm sure your uh, public speaking will go to a much, will transcend a lot more limits and surpass great limits. Over to you, Toastmaster. Oh, General. Let me now invite. Third evaluator, Postmaster Chitrakshi, evaluating a third speaker. Over to you, Chitrakshi. Toastmaster Malvika, the sand cat. And I couldn't see the audience. I'm sorry, I can't tell you how the audience reacted to it. But here I could see the grammarian in me, and both of us made the same face like, what? What is the sand cat? How do we not know about it? And the way you reacted to the answers, I'm sure that's the same reaction you got from the audience. What is the sand cat? Who? Where? When did this new species get discovered and why do we not know? So the topic was brilliant. The way you picked up the topic and related it to all of us, very good. And your choice of words, well, I think we at Toastmasters, we are constantly given... Uh, evaluation so that we can evaluate people who are speaking and the speakers are always ones that challenge us as well. So my constant evaluate, my evaluators have always told me about choice of words. And now I know what they mean by the power of words. Your words were all so powerful, whether it was describing the cat as agile or telling us how we are not doing too well or what we could do better in our lives. Bang on. From your previous evaluation, you mentioned that the coat was going over everyone's head and that's what was a little bit of a challenge for you. I do understand what the previous evaluator also meant by it because the coat was a little too long and the way you said it was a little difficult for everyone to understand. But I realized that you, what you added here, taking from your previous feedback, was explaining the quote properly to us. And so we were in tune with you as far as the quote went. So you did a good job of picking up that feedback and using it in your speech. Second, as far as your conclusion was concerned, I think you really did well when you added from the beginning, added the Sandcat story and told us how it's not our surroundings. It's not our surroundings that are a stress for us, but how we adapt to those surroundings. So very good job done there. Since you especially uh, also needed a little bit of a recommendation as far as body language is concerned, that is my point of recommendation to make, transcend you from a good speaker to a great one. As far as your body language is concerned, you were holding a piece of paper in your hand. The issue is not holding the piece of paper, but constantly holding it and around your fingers, moving it here and there and using it as a crutch. I would suggest if you have a piece of paper, keep it in your hand like that so it's not visible. So say, for instance, I have a piece of paper right here and I put it in my hand like that so people can't see it and it's not a crutch for me. Second, you were moving. There is a deliberate movement when you're going from one place to another, but there is a little bit of fragile movement when you're doing it because you're conscious. And your movement on the stage seems more conscious than deliberate. So work on this transition for yourself as well. Having said that, your choice of words, your choice of the, uh, the speech title, your choice of speech, the code, the way you added the previous feedback and made it well work well for all of us was excellent as far as your body language is concerned maybe don't move around a little too much and be very mindful of the piece of paper in your hand having said that very well done and all the best to you over to you team general evaluator thank you so much let me have our final evaluator for today, distinguished Toastmaster Vida Prasanna, evaluating our speaker, Toastmaster Prana Prota. Great. Good afternoon again, and uh, Toastmaster Prana in particular. I am going to give my recommendations to your speech based on exactly the criteria that's listed on your evaluation form, which is what you excelled at, what you may want to work on, and what would you do to challenge yourself. So to start off, um, what you excelled at is just your presence. 
I think you have great comfort just standing on the stage and delivering to people. And I think you do that effortlessly. And that is really outstanding from you being on stage and delivering a speech. What you also did well is involving people in the audience, like you pointed out to Nancy and Sarah. So you tried to get the audience involved in your speech, which was also quick thinking. And I think that's a great asset for a public speaker to be on the feet and pull in people to involve them in your speech. The third bit is your voice. That is perhaps your biggest asset as a public speaker. You have a loud, clear voice, which means you have a wide range in your voice, which will help you modulate your voice very, very effectively. Effectively, There are very few people who can actually boast of having a great voice. And it's a huge advantage, as, um, as unfair as it may seem. But I feel that that's an advantage that you have to leverage on for all your speeches. Now, what you may want to work on is very similar to what, what I just mentioned as one of your strengths. I still feel that there is a lot of leeway you can take with your voice, especially with your pitch. During your speech, there were a couple of instances when you spoke about how you addressed a colleague or even Saurav saying, you know, this is what I want. I, if you're going to perform this way, you may have to, we may have to ask you to leave. But your pitch still was at the same level, the same enthusiasm. So that's where you may have to bring your pitch down to a lower tone and say, if this is how you're going to work, you'll probably have to leave. Right? So... So play with your voice because you have that advantage, advantage and you can do it. The last part is, is something that I'd like to challenge you with. And that is, while you completely enjoyed yourself while giving your speech, I felt you somewhere left the audience behind. And I say that because I feel you did not pause enough. After every expression, after every sentence, you allow the audience to absorb what you said. So my request to you is that not just come up here and enjoy the speech yourself, let the audience enjoy you as well. So going back and just to summarize, great comfort, great presence on stage, great clarity in speech, great voice modulation, that with a little bit of from begging and bullying to the basics of public speaking, don't leave your audience behind, pause, use you-centric statements, bring them along in your speech, and you'll be a fabulous speaker. All the best for your upcoming speeches. Thank you. Okay, so now is my time to, give, to share my feedback on the speakers, the evaluators first, and then I'll uh, talk about uh, the other two takers which I will invite the accountants to come over for this time. So starting with the speaker one and uh, the evaluator one. So uh, Priti is not there in the meeting, but I think they're getting this recorded. Uh, actually, this applies for both Priti and Prakash. I think Prakash is also not there. It is very important for us to go through the project resource and not just go through the project headlines. Okay, so uh, both the evaluators made a little bit of a mistake in the project. See, there, were, there was a comment that Priti had made that... Um, uh, you have to share some aspect of your leadership style, which was missing. I think that's what he mentioned. She mentioned to Amit, right? So I was reading it out. So remember, when you look at the evaluation form, the purpose statement has two parts to it. It's the purpose of this project, the whole project, right? Which you have done as a build up to this speech. Remember, this speech is not the project. The speech is like the final test that you are giving. Right? There's a study that you have done before that. The materials that you have gone through, the videos that you have gone through, all of this together is the project. So there's the purpose of the project and there's the purpose of the speech. What you're evaluating today is the purpose of the speech. If you have taken the pains to, to find out what the speaker has done as a part of the project, kudos to you. If you have not done that, then don't comment on that part. Right? So the purpose of the project is for the member to identify his or her primary leadership style. It is the purpose of the project. What is the purpose of the speech? This for the member to share some aspect of his or her primary leadership style or discuss leadership style in general. And I think this second part is what was covered in the speech today. Right? So I think it's perfectly okay uh, for the speaker to talk about leadership style in general. Because this, this speech can cover both of it. Now coming to Prakash, a similar kind of a, a problem. 
The purpose of this project was for the member to clearly define how Toastmaster envisions mentoring. So what it says is, after you do this project, you will be able to define this is what Toastmaster thinks of mentoring. That is not a takeaway from this speech. So to say that the speaker did not talk about how Toastmaster envisions mentoring, is because you are not reading the second statement, which says the purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege, which the speaker did, right? So I think this is something that is a learning for all of us, that reading the evaluation resource very carefully, word by word, line by line, is very important. Because when you're taking the stage here, you have a very important responsibility of giving the real feedback to the speaker, right? So, and we have to do it with a lot of authenticity. Now, coming to the speakers and evaluator duos, uh, I, as I said, Amit, I really liked your way of handling this. This is, I have completed seven paths and this is level two is one level where I've already str always struggled and particularly this particular project because I didn't know how will I like every time talk about the same leadership style. I learned something from you. I will not exactly copy this, but I will definitely be inspired in my next speech when I'm going to attempt this. So thank you for giving me an idea. Did you go through the leadership style survey before you took this, you did, right? So then why did you mention that I don't know my leadership style? Which is okay, but I am saying that I'm not a part of the speech. The speech was perfectly okay, but I say as a part of the project, understanding your leadership style is a project outcome. Right? So if you don't, if you have not identified that, please do that. It's important for you to take that survey. Because this is an intended outcome of this project. So um, now coming to um, Ashwini, uh, one observation from my side, I don't know if Ashwini is still there in the meeting, if, is, if she's not there, our VP education is there. One comment is, and I've seen this for Toastmasters mentoring project, there's a difference between mentor, coach, teacher, trainer. And we often mix it up and enjoy interchangeably. It's not like that, right? So for example, one of the, Prime conditions of being a mentor mentee relationship is both of them have a say in the relationship. Right? So I have to have a say in this person as being my mentor. Like the Gita is my mentor. She's not, I mean, I'm not that blessed, but I'm saying this is an example that Gita is my mentor. And then both Gita Prasanna and I have to agree that we are in a mentor mentee relationship. That privilege you don't have for a teacher. You don't Go to school and say, I don't choose this teacher as my math teacher. Sorry. That way our life would have been so much better, right? right? So this is one big difference. So whenever we're doing this project, we're always inclined. I've seen people saying that my best, my uh, mentor I look up to is Dr. A.B. Abdul Kalam. I mean, seriously, is it even possible? So they, I have to understand there's a difference between an idol, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, right? And this difference is there for a reason. So this is something that Ashwini, this is a feedback for you. I would have loved if Prakash would have mentioned that in his feedback as well. Coming to Pranav, how have you grown, man? I mean, seriously, you have what, like three months or two months in the Toastmasters system, right? And the comfort that I see in you on the stage, I mean, in particular, more than your prepares with your table talk, like if bigs could fly, I know many Toastmasters, veteran Toastmasters who would want to fly away from here if they get a topic like this. And you are like, you absolutely became a big yourself when you started flying, right? So I, I think this imagination, this thought process, hats off to you. I mean, you have become so comfortable and you have discovered humor as your genre, right? And that is something that is great. It's very tough. It's very tough to have humor uh, as a part of the speech, as a, as a style of speaking. So great job, uh, Pranav, and, and that I saw in this one also. Just one request, when you're interacting with the members in the audience, uh, try to be a little bit, either you do research, or you save examples. So for example, you talked about some child that Nancy has, right? So are you sure that Nancy has a kid? Are you sure that she is married? Are you sure that this will not offend her? Right, it is very important. So we just can't, you know, take that example. Or it's okay, you fired me. But the thing is that if I was not me or someone else, I would have like, you know, what do you mean by you fire me? You can, you can even hire me, right? So you could get such a retort back from the audience, which would totally take you off guard. And the rest of this speech will be history. So don't take those chances. Use safe examples or research of the member of the audience and give examples. Okay, so this is one request for you. Malvika, the sand card example. Where is Malvika? Yeah. 
The SANCAD example, I think I've also not heard about the SANCAD great. Um, one thing I did not understand is how it related to the stress. The transition was not very clear. The, you know, I understood the SANCAD to your story, that transition was there, but you know, this example has to somewhere connect back with the main idea, right? That the stress is what is leading to the problem. So are you telling me that the SANCAD has no stress? We are? Yeah, but then how is the SANCAT relevant to stress? Okay, then that connection was not very apparent. That connection has to be made more apparent. So I was thinking that the SANCAT has so much of stress. So what are you trying to say here? So, you know, there will be people like us in the audience also who don't understand so quickly. So you'll have to keep, take us along with you, right, in your speech. <clears throat> uh, Chitrakshi, um, and one, one general feedback about everyone except for TTM Gita, for all the four evaluators, it is very easy to focus on the speaker's delivery style and give a feedback, right? The hard part is to focus on both the content and the delivery. And that is what I think you should be spending more time on. So if you were speaking for two to three minutes in evaluation, would you spend one and a half minutes talking about the speaker standing up and speaking? Or spend 30 seconds on that and talk about the construct of the speech and talk about the examples and then also mention that you should have stood up and speak. Right? So I think that is something that you need to decide on. So uh, can we have a big round of applause for all our speakers and evaluators? Moving on, our timer. Can you please just very quickly mention if any disqualifications are there? We already have the time for the previous speakers. So uh, for table topics, Toastmaster uh, Siddharth took uh, two minutes, 30 sec 13 seconds. Toastmaster Suresh took uh, one minute, 30 seconds. Toastmaster Prana, one minute, eight seconds. Uh, Toastmaster Chitrakshi, one minute, 43 seconds. Toastmaster Teju, one minute, 19 seconds. As for evaluators, uh, evaluator Preeti took three minutes, uh, 11 seconds. Uh, evaluator Prakash took three minutes, 35 seconds. Evaluator Chitrakshi took three minutes, 15 seconds, and evaluator three minutes, 10 seconds. Thank you. Moving on, can we have an R counter? Postman Stramit. Uh, hi, everyone. So I have come up with my report. So uh, uh, I will start with the uh, team on. So he has used uh, R four times in his uh, the whole, whole uh, kind of time. Uh, other than that, uh, if I talk about the uh, different different speeches, so uh, Toastmaster Amit uh, didn't take uh, didn't say in any filler word or filler sound. Uh, see, similarly, Malvika uh, didn't say in any sound and uh, any filler sound and filler word. Uh, Toastmaster Pranav uh, said uh, two times ah uh, ah. Uh, uh, if I talk about Postmaster Aswani, so she used uh, use, uh, art more than 20 times and uh, so 10 times and uh, 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 and some other filler word also. So her pattern was uh, so uh, and you know. Uh, in the evaluation section, uh, Toastmaster Preeti uh, said uh, art two times and Toastmaster Prakash uh, uh, said art two times. So other than this, these people uh, use uh, minimal uh, filler word and filler sound. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Just one quick uh, one quick comment, Amit, that uh, if someone is using more than five filler uh, words or sounds, someone like me, right? So please say more than five filler sounds for you. Don't mention the exact number. It's very embarrassing for us. <laughs> now we invite our grammarian. Uh, Toastmaster Aparna Raja to present her report, please. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster uh, Sora. So here's my report and thank you, Aaron, for please turning on your uh, video there. Now, today we had a plethora of good learning because we had a variety of speakers. Here are some of the good phrases and words that I managed to pick up. And I'm going to start off with Toastmaster Boni. He started out the meeting and he had some wonderful usages like bloomed through adversities. Collaborate, don't compete. Our TMOD did not stay behind. He had some great usages too. Rut, stuck in the rut. 
And he had a wonderful quote, which summed up the theme really well. When you fall, don't shrink. And when you go really high or when you feel really high, don't puff. Wonderfully used. And I think it uh, conveyed the message very clearly. Toastmaster Saurav, DTM Saurav had this beautiful usage, seductive usage. Wonderfully put there. Our first speaker for the day, Toastmaster Amit, had this nice word that caught my attention, which was reality distortion field. Reality distortion field. And he repeated it twice for good measure. He had some nice words like conglomerate, instrumental, and navigate challenges. Moving on to our next speaker, Toastmaster Pranab. Toastmaster Pranab has some nice words again. Decipher, abysmal, and some nice phrases like begging or bullying, a fit of rage, prized employee. He had an analogy which summed up the topic well. Communication is like a vehicle. He also had a very interesting usage of uh, this thing called anaphora, where you're repeating something for good measure and for impact. He said, right words, using right words, right at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. Stressing on this thing. Right word, right place, right time. It's an anaphora. Beautifully done. Toastmaster Pranam. Our speaker, Toastmaster Malarika, what a pleasure it is to hear you speak. It, it is Beautiful to hear someone speak that way when they have these wonderful adjectives littered all over their speeches. It's a pleasure. She had some great words um, transfixed. She had an epithet, uh, an adjective to describe the sand cat, agile and dexterous, billboards. Now, the reason I'm pointing out billboards is it's a lesser known cousin of the word hoarding, which most of us use so commonly. Billboards is a nice word, good change. Paint a pretty picture and I'll leave it to your imagination. It reverberated. More we eradicate, more we are incapacitated. Such great phrases, such impactful and powerful phrases here from Toastmaster Malavika, our last speaker. And what a wonderful way to uh, finish your speech with that great quote. Thank you very much. We also had a Toastmaster Preeti. She used a nice word like flabbergasted. Toastmaster Siddharth, our uh, beach speaker today, had this very interesting usage. Epizuxis is what it is called. I actually had to look up the pronunciation myself. It's called an epizuxis, which means stressing or using the same word or words in the exact same form multiple number of times and still making sense. Okay, that's the simpler way of putting. Uh, he said, I went from one place to a place to a place to a place and I was still in this place. It made sense. Another example that you've probably heard more commonly to make sense of what an epizuxis is, like a rose is a rose is a rose, right? That is an epizuxis too. Our Toastmaster, Suresh, used some beautiful words again, hunky-dory and I heave a sigh of relief. Our Toastmaster, DTM uh, Geeta, Geeta Prasanna, had uh, some very nice phrases like, be on your feet. And she, I believe, mentioned something called centric statement also when she concluded her speech. Nice usages today, great usages. So I'm going to move on to the not so great usages that we can all work on. And it happens when we speak really fast. These things tend to happen, but just bring it to your, bringing it to your notice. Find this answers. Find these answers. Most of them are fallen in this trap. Most of us have fallen into this trap. I didn't listen it. I didn't listen to it. There is another usage that I want to point out. We generally use can I and may I interchangeably, but they actually mean quite different things. Can I is a question of capability. Can I, can I pass this exam? Do I have the capability? May I come in? I have the capability because I have legs, but I'm asking you permission. That is may I. So when we say, can I request can I ask you, it is, may I request, may I ask? It's not a question of capability. It's more of an etiquette and also asking for permission. So we would say, may I? Another usage was 6 million recalling of cars. So the noun and the verb was interchanged, which changed the meaning. Uh, 6 million cars were recalled. And uh, also there was a little bit of uh, local language or rather mother tongue influence, which is totally fine as long as it doesn't mix up the meaning. I was so much frustrated. I was very frustrated, it's still okay. So much frustrated, doesn't really, it kind of ends up confusing a lot of listeners. Uh, 
A couple of mispronunciations, they were very simple words, but because these are very commonly used words, I wanted to bring it to your attention. Environment, env environment. These are not the right pronunciations. It is environment. Environment is a more localized usage, but not the right one. It's listen and not listen. Not, not the, the, listen. So simple slip ups here or there, but other than that, I think it was wonderfully used. There were good usages in the phrases. Everything went really well. And quickly calling out the people who use the word of the day today, ample usage. I am absolutely delighted. Toastmaster Suraj, uh, he used it. The person who gave us the intro of the um, coronation, he used it a couple of times. Toastmaster Siddharth kept using it over and over again. Uh, Toastmaster Boniface used it a couple of times. RTM Modi for today, Toastmaster Sajjan used it a couple of times. Toastmaster Malavika added it uh, in her speech. Toastmaster Prakash, our evaluator, and Toastmaster Chitrakshi. These were the people who used the word of the day. Thank you very much. That's been my report. Wonderful learning here today with all of you. And back to you, General Evaluator. So, may I... Uh... May I give a round of applause for you? Who's smarter? Is that can I give a round of applause? No, may I give a round of applause? Great. Okay, before I call in the listener, let me uh, share the comments about the meeting and then the listener can come in and ask the questions, right? So, <laughs> coming uh, about the tag team, I think I've already mentioned uh, Aparna, great grammarian report. Um, so, uh, great job with explaining the rhetorical devices as well. So, thank you there. Now coming to uh, the overall meeting. So we uh, we had a very challenging meeting today because of the technical challenges. Two, three, four times the meeting got disconnected. We had to reconnect back. So that is something that we probably have to live with if we decide to go with the hybrid setup. I don't have much to say about that. The two of the sergeant at arms, great energy, great passion in starting the meeting. That's most important. Presiding officer, Boniface, Toastmaster Boniface, I think you had a... Uh, I think he has left. Uh, yeah, so uh, he had he had again a very purposeful, a very good story. Just one one quick comment is that in Toastmasters, I don't feel any of the clubs are competitors of anyone else. We are all here together. No Toastmaster is competing with another Toastmaster. If we are there in the contest space, that's because to test how much progress we have made compared to where we were before. So there is no competition. We are all together in this game. And this is the best proof of the meeting today. Coming to the Toastmaster of the day, that line, I'm going to write, I've already written it down. I'm going to take back with me. When you're low, don't shrink. When you're high, don't puff. I think that's something that I'm going to put in a poster and put on my wall. We all need a constant reminder for that. Thank you so much for doing that. Our uh, David Topic Master, no one has ever embarrassed adults this way. That she did today, right? I mean, everyone had more embarrassment on their face than they're signed up for. So God help you if she's a table topic master. Okay, so I'll not blame you if you are not picking her up the next time. I won't. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, about things that went really well, but great topics, Nancy. I've never seen such, uh, you know, out of the box kind of topics. Great topics. Now, um, there are well, there's one thing that I would mention is in terms of uh, the meeting protocols. It is very important. I mean, we are a hundred year old organization and that is because I strongly believe because we adhere to the protocols very much. So there are two observations that we follow. One is, if as a speaker or as a role taker, you don't agree with anything that's happening in the meeting, there is a way for you to raise it. Stopping the meeting flow and interrupting the evaluator or the speaker, giving a feedback on the feedback is not the right way. The better way of doing it is taking it offline with the evaluator, saying that this is what my point of view is. Because you can always say, okay, then, you know, what is the purpose for? Can I not speak my mind? Yes. But imagine if everyone starts speaking their mind. If someone says, who said that uh, the pronunciation of that word is this and not this, right? Then where will we land? The next half an hour, we'll be fighting all of us, right? So let's maintain the decorum. The second decorum is about the agenda. I didn't see on the agenda the coronation mentioned anyway. So if you are planning to come into a meeting, it is your job as a coronation. It is more for the coronation team and is more as a district officer as well as a general evaluator. It is your responsibility to take into account, ensure that the club takes into account the time. Almost 25 minutes of time went by for a meeting which was already delayed. Right. So net-net, it was a major damage for this meeting, which is not the intent, I'm sure, from your side as well. So 
next time in any club, you have to ensure that you block a time and adhere to the time so that we are doing justice to the meeting as well. So these are the only two observations from my side in terms of things that could have been better. Thank you so much, Dark Magic, for giving us an opportunity, for giving me an opportunity to stand here. These are the people from whom I learned about Toastmaster, Toastmaster Suresh, distinguished Toastmaster Gita person. And this is the club where we actually all started learning Dark Magic. We used to come there as guests and DTM Teresa was your president at that time. So I've got a lot of memories with this club. Nancy has a lot of memories with this club. Aparna has a lot of memories with this club. Thank you so much for helping us grow and learn. We are because you are. Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, oh, by the way, one last comment. Let's not forget how to do handshake. This is how we do handshake. Since the online thing I've started, people have started doing handshake like this. This is not a handshake. This is a handshake. Thank you, uh, DTM Savro. Let's let's see. Can we call the listener? Yeah, yeah, right. I think uh, your feedback session today was quite special because I've not noticed general evaluator evaluating evaluators. Okay, so that's been quite special for 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 me. And uh, let's give a big round of applause to Savro for the. Uh, let us invite the listener to test our uh, listening skills. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I haven't given a limited deadline. Let's keep it to keep it short. So it is. Believe me, it's very you know easy to sit there and enjoy listening and all. But there was a test already done for the speaker who came here and gave their speeches, evaluation and all. But now. I would like to present it, you know, have a quick test to see how uh, you are good in listening. Okay. So I would like to start that uh, toaster, so, uh, uh, Toastmaster Surya in the starting mentioned this is a very special meeting actually, especially about the coronation, about these two clubs, Gabby and Talk Magic. Why is it so that the coronation is so special? No, it is why so special. It's happening after four years no. offline. No. Sorry. Yes, that that's yes, that's contestant. You sorry, I should have this one. Yes, the good eat which I promised. Yeah. So it is it is actually so special and I would like to uh, say all the best to Aparna. I think as she's going that. This one and uh, the Matthews, who is not uh, available, but this is so special about this. And now I would like to as a, come to the second question, second query, uh, that jobs, he talks about, uh, Tom Toastmaster, he talks about the jobs leader's type. What was it? Authoritarian. Yes, uh, sorry, Saparna. Already Toastmaster Nancy has answered. Okay. <laughs> Big round of applause. Oh, this is uh, about Toastmaster for now. He talks about two leadership styles which he had initially. Begging and bullying. Begging and bullying. Sparna and uh, Nancy, I forgot to tell you, there is no second chance. Let's, you know, other we maybe test like, you know, how they are attentive, the other uh, listener also. Anyone else other than Aparna and Gita and Nancy? Begging and bullying. Very good. Begging and bullying. Okay, I'll keep it short, uh, the last one. And uh, it's an interesting one also because we had, you know, a very good speech from uh, Toastmaster Malvika, where the sand cat leaves. No, no, I will I would like to know from someone who... Yes, yes, you're right. So it's, it, it is Tara that's it. No, no, but she already got it. So the rule, that's the rule that you should get. Oh, sorry. And just last but not the least, I would like to remind you about the Boniface story. How the both the this uh, the tortoise and the this uh, you call it this one the rabbit. How they won. How they won eventually. Carry the on top of. Yeah, actually the symbol. This no the symbol. Yeah. Yeah, the simple actually, yeah, you're right. They do it all this, this, this was the process, this was the action. Actually, they simply listen to each other and agree. 
So that's it with, with that. Yeah, with that, actually, I would like to hand it over to Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster. Well, today's meeting was special. We tried something new. There was a lot of challenges, but I think we excelled at it. We kept going. It was a wonderful learning experience. And uh, now it's time to hand it over to our presiding officer in charge, uh, Asha. So how was the meeting, everyone? Interesting. Do you find happiness? If not 100%, at least increase the percentage of happiness. <laughs> okay. I know we faced a lot of technical challenge, but uh, what I feel is we could transcend through all the challenges and it was a first experience for Talk Magic Club. Which was a learning lesson for us because we are fully physical, but now in this new era, as Saurya rightly mentioned, many clubs are online or hybrid. And in order to collaborate with the team and you know win together, we must do this kind of meeting so frequently. So it was a new realization. We will take it to the XCOM. So in spite of all the challenges, let's give a big round of applause to everyone who had great patience for today's meeting. And another big round of applause to both XCOM team, XCOM of Talk Magic and XCOM of Gabby's for making this happen and for doing all the preparations. I know Malvika and everyone who were in the group and doing a lot of things even during the meeting and big round of applause to both XCOM. And another special round of applause to our IT engineer for today who is sitting right in front of me, Toss Master Anand, you know, getting us through the technical challenge. So with this, is the results ready? Or we, do we need to wait? Everyone votes. The survey link has been sent. What about online? Uh, Abrana, can you just ask? What it? Sure. Um, Siddharth, Nagesh, sir, Shrireka, are you able to see the survey link? Have you voted? There's a survey link on the chat. Please vote. We just have two, three other people, Asha. I voted. The other two, I think, will have to because the rest of them are all available offline. Yes, yeah. So meanwhile, uh, as we mentioned, like our president mentioned in the beginning, we have our club outing tomorrow. And if any last minute joinees would like to join us, then you can contact any member in the XCOM. We will take it forward. And tomorrow by 8.30, we will uh, leave to the club. Okay. And even Gabby's yeah, club, if anyone is interested, you can also contact us. You can join us. Yes, we, we really would love to collaborate even there. <laughs> okay. So with that... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to announce the best tackle roll taker. Any guess? Yeah. It's can you see me? It's Aparna. So who is, yeah, who is going to be taking, you know, maybe Nancy can come forward because, and who is clicking the pick? Oh, yes, I will. Aparna, 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 Best role taker. Toastmaster Saurabh. Uh, 
And best table topic speaker is Toastmaster Chitrakshi. She's not there. Fine. Nancy can take them. I'm not covering anyone now. Our best evaluator, DTM Gita. So, first is the history of Cos Magic. Yeah, and we have three best speakers. <laughs> okay, so I'll call one by one, all three can come together and we'll take a break. So, first is Toss Master Amit. Yeah, okay, then Toss Master Malvika. Yeah, we have then Toastmaster Pranam. So you want one by one fix or okay. okay. First one by one we okay. 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 Yeah, very right, right. 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 yeah. yeah. right. Now we can take one together. <laughs> can hold it. Can hold it. So maybe I'll move. Just... No, 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 please, please. Please send that. I don't know. Uh, okay. 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 I declare our 523rd meeting closed and we have nice, like, delicious snacks and tea over here. So let's enjoy that network. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we are closing the meeting. Thank you so much. Sid, you can go back to the beach. <laughs> are you ready?